Hi! Hey, come on. Mike and Dev here. Dev and Mike. Dev and Mike here. Mike and Dev. Is there an echo in here? Echo. We've been gone a bit because we had to move. <laughs> so <laughs> it's been crazy. It's we're finally time. back here doing Led Zeppelin 4, so we're psyched. We're doing Led Zeppelin 4 today, otherwise known as Zoso, otherwise known as Four Symbols, otherwise known as the fourth album. Otherwise known as Untitled. That's got more names than me. It doesn't have any name, technically. Oh, I, I so did. officially it is unnamed. It's the unnamed. That's what we're starting today, and we're going to start with Black Dog. Black Dog like the symbol of death? Is uh No. Black Dog like some like... random dog that used to hang out where they recorded this album, and they just <laughs> some, uh, named it after the Black stray? Dog. Some yeah. just like, I, I don't know if it was a stray. stray. Maybe it was a neighbor. I don't know. It was a dog that hung around. Yeah. So this album was Part recorded. This album was recorded at Headley Grange, which is a country house. They wanted to have a more relaxed atmosphere. Country houses have the best names. Yes. Headley Grange. Yes. Dig. Now, before we get too much into that, I just wanted to mention to those of you who may not have joined us before or have heard me say this before. Purpose of our channel is to recreate listening to albums the way they were intended with these album-based bands. Wallow in them. Yeah, and listen to the whole album in order and without any distractions, without any videos, without any Mm -hmm. lyrics, unless the album provided the lyrics. So that's sort of the goal of our channel. So we're going to be doing Led Zeppelin 4, the entire album. I'm recreating my youth when I used to buy an album, come home, put it on, start to finish, just lay in my bed. And I stared at the album while I listened to it. And that's all I did. And that, that's what I'd like to get that feel. And Dev never had that experience because... Not with Led Zeppelin, with other things. Yeah. Her knowledge of Led Zeppelin tape. is greatest hits, you know. Mm-hmm. And so she hasn't heard a lot of these songs at all. And I haven't heard these songs in a long time because I haven't been listening to Led Zeppelin for a while. I'm rediscovering them. I can tell you now through three albums that I... Totally misunderstood the appeal. I mean, you can hear a Led Zeppelin song and totally fall in love with it. But the appeal of Robert Plant, Jimmy Page, John Paul, Jones. You're on a roll. Oh, God. Oh, no, you had to say something. And now I can't remember. The drummer. You'll remember. Bonham. Bonham. John Bonham. Led Zeppelin 4 was their biggest album. Is my favorite song on here? I don't know what your favorite song is. Well, you don't know me at all. Oh, I know what your favorite song is. <laughs> no, Cashmere Kaj- is not on this album. Here's the album cover. Give me some art. All right. I'm so liking it's very the, sparse. I won't say it's like rustic chic. I'll say it's the, uh, I love the crumpling wallpaper. Somebody was into flowers. I don't think that's wallpaper. Floral. I think that was. Yeah. A, I don't the, know what. This is the with the leaves, the leaf patterns. Unless oh, okay. it was a, a tinted stamp, but I don't think so. They're too uniform. Well, it's some wall of an abandoned the building or something. The wallpaper is peeling and off of the yeah, I don't crumbling know. wall. And that painting, I think, is a painting that Robert Plant just had. So they thought it would look cool, so they just hung it in there. But to me, I'm getting sort of a country city vibe. Love that dude. The dichotomy between, you know, the block of flats and the greenery in the foreground. I don't know much about the painting, but I don't think the painting had any particular significance. Fine. That's the front and back cover. And you notice there's no words on it at all. Nothing. No Led Zeppelin, no title for the album, nothing. I don't know if the spine had anything on it. I can't recall. I'm sure our experts in the comments will tell us. And And why did they choose to do this? Because of the mixed reaction of Led Zeppelin 3. Ah, the critics sure. kept comparing it to Led Zeppelin 2. They wanted to just like, look, we're not even going to give you a hint of what this is. No comparing this to anything. This is just what it is. It stands on its own. I think that's sort of the message they were trying to give with this. Here's the inside. Love that. So when you open it's it up. It's like graphite pencil So obviously or something. This, it would be sideways, but Love that's what that. you see when you open that's the gotta, I think that's charcoal or pencil. We got to look that up. I'm going to look that up later. Yeah, I'm not sure who the artist is, but do you recognize the hermit? From Tarot? Yeah, that's the hermit from Tarot cards. It's like the wise man. And I would say, I don't know if you're wise if you wish to retract from the world completely. Maybe. We'll see the return of the hermit when we watch Days the Confused from the concert film later. Jimmy Page plays that character. Neat. And, the, and here's the inside. Oh, I can see Jimmy Page doing that one. Here's the sleeve that the album came in. Okay. 
And those are the four symbols. Okay. The so first one who? is Jimmy Page. Okay. Don't Which, ask me what these mean because I don't know if they mean the anything. The first sure. one looks like a, an interesting like Arabic symbol. Doesn't that look Arabic to you? Mm, I don't know what it looks like. It's cool though. It is cool. The I'm, second uh, one is I'm John... I'm thinking Aladdin's magic lamp. Sorry. 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 That's okay. Go for it. The second one is John Paul Jones. Celtic. It came from some book of symbols. I'm not sure which one. All of them? No. His. Right, and his. then the next one is John Bonham, the one that kind of looks like a drum set. Or That's John Bonham. Half the Olympics. Half the maybe. Olympics. Uh, yeah. People used to make fun of that because if you turn it upside down, it's this. It's the logo of Ballantine Beer. And John Bonham was known for throwing back a few, so... Everything is connected. And the last one is Robert Plant, and I believe he designed that one himself. He's the page. He's the poet. He's the lyricist. Mm -hmm. And I believe he, he did that one himself. That one's cute. I like that. But so I that's like feather quills, too. But that was it. That's the only thing that gives you an implication of what this album is. And then I oh, believe these four the symbols song. also okay. appeared on the label that was affixed to the center of the vinyl. So this is a front and back one? Yeah. Records have two sides. <laughs> these aren't laser Shut discs. Up. Or CDs. This is the albums. I love that typography. Before we get into listening, just a quick thank you to our patrons. Thanks, patrons. It's really helping out the channel. Please check out our Patreon if you haven't yet. Link in the description. The what we have on our Patreon are basically extra videos. That's the minimum that you get. But there's different tiers and different perks. So please check it out if you can. And please subscribe. We need subscribers. We always need subscribers. That's the the holy grail on youtube it really helps out a lot so if you haven't subscribed yet please do and we want to thank all you guys for all your comments and likes we really enjoy it and they help the algorithm and we really enjoy the comments okay oh, that's, some that's knowledgeable it. peoples yay knowledge okay so this album was really big and it was a huge critical success as well they recorded at headley grange they have a really good sound on this album especially the drum sound and it's because of the acoustics of the place, the way they mic'd it. They were using the Rolling Stones mobile studio. So this was something that the Rolling Stones had. The first thing we're going to listen to is something by Fleetwood Mac. Because on this channel, we sometimes try to listen to songs that may have influenced the song we're listening to. Mm -hmm. But it was a big song back then, 1969, Fleetwood Mac, before Stevie Nicks and all those, you know. Which I didn't know was a thing. So... It had the bassist and the drummer that they had in modern day, but the other people were different people. Black Dog has a vocal trade-off between the vocals and the band, and then the vocals and then the band. And this song did that as well, and it's, let's, let's listen to a little it's bit like of it. It's like the dueling banjos, but with voices and instruments. I, however you want to think about it. <laughs> it doesn't come here. All right, so this is, this is Oh Well by Fleetwood Mac. I need Mac. analogies. Now the difference here is this has a very long instrumental intro. So what? I would have liked Fleet with Mac before Stevie. That's good to know. That's good. You know, open doors, windows, props. about the shape I'm in. I can't sing. I ain't pretty and my legs are thin. But don't ask me what I think of you. I might not give the answer that you want me to. Hmm. That's awesome. Ooh. It goes back and forth, but most of it is instrumental, that song. So I think that the singing is a good interplay with the band, but the band is the star. Whereas in Black Dog, I think it's more equal. I shan't know until we're here. I think this was one of the first songs, if not the first song they recorded for the album. And I don't think this one was recorded at Headley Grange, just to be technical about it. Let us listen to Black Dog, first song on Led Zeppelin 4. Hey, hey, mom, oh, okay.
Oh, there was an extra beat there. very alpha dog lyrics. the way that he's recorded multiple tracks of that. Getting chills. There's that opening phrase again. I like the panning, the voice panning and stuff. That happens every what? single time in this song. Well, let me first say that this album has a lot of guitar solos on it. Most Led Zeppelin songs have a guitar solo on them. But Led Zeppelin 3 had a lot of songs without a guitar solo, which was odd for them. But for me, that guitar solo is one of the highlights, that outro guitar solo. This is like the quintessential hard rock song, right? It's got screaming vocals. Okay. It's got awesome guitar riffs, a killer solo. It's got lyrics about the ladies. And not sappy romantic lyrics either, if you know what I mean, ladies. No, no ballad. I just want to also give props again, Robert Plant, another virtuoso singing performance. A lot of high singing some of those high notes he was doing in concert, but I don't think he could sing the whole song that high in concert. That's challenging. I love the way that he layered them. Yeah. That was really, really neat. And I hadn't heard that before. Like, actually paid attention to the different layering. 
components of those. But you see how in that song, as opposed to the Fleetwood Mac song, like the vocals are just as important as the band and vice versa. Whereas the Fleetwood Mac song is mostly the band. That's got to be one of the most iconic vocal openings to a song that exists in rock music. I was thinking maybe Bohemian Rhapsody, but I can't think of any other song close. I heard John Paul Jones wrote that riff. I'm sure he and Paige worked on it. One of the goals was they wanted to make it complicated so that other bands couldn't easily copy it. That's not the kind of thing you just pick up and start playing. You got to learn that and practice that, especially that part after the singing where it goes, no, 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 no. I'm going to play that. Let me just play that part again real fast. In high school, a friend of mine used to, a couple of people used to say like, oh, the guitar falls behind there. You know, he can't keep up. And then, and then he catches up like later. That's what it kind of sounds like if you're just casually listening to it. But if you actually listen to it closely, the guitar and the bass, first of all, are totally in unison. They wouldn't fall behind at the same time. And also they're playing the same frequency of notes. They're just playing more notes that don't fit into the measure. So they're, they're playing on a different time signature than the drums are playing, which is fascinating to me. Let's listen to that part. You're saying they totally did that on purpose. Yes. Because oh, yeah. they, they play say it the they same. They did that, or they play it like that every single time. They play it like that every single time. That's the way everybody plays it. That's interesting. The drums just have a four-four beat going on. I wonder Do if you had to have like earplugs in at special intervals. So the drums, the drums don't falter. They just, they're just keeping a steady beat at halftime, which I think is interesting. I think that the fact that the drums are playing halftime. Like instead of going dunk, tuck, dunk, tuck, it's going like dunk, tuck, dunk, tuck. So I think that gives the, the riff more intensity because it lets you focus on that. The drums are playing a 4-4 beat, but the guitar and bass are changing time signature into a totally different time signature and then back. And then eventually, though, the, the time signatures meet. Like there's extra beats, say, in the, in the guitar part, but if you do that enough times, they'll sync up again. You don't have to hang out for this part, Dev. I'm going to listen to it again off camera and then figure out the time signature thing going on. And then we'll be back with Dev. Okay. I listened to that part of the song again. And what I heard was, as I said before, the drums playing at 4-4 the entire time with a 5-4 measure at the end of the section. Now the guitar and bass started out at 4-4 with the drums. And then there's a 5-4 measure followed by a couple of 9-8 measures and then a 2-4 measure before it's back in sync with the drums at 4-4. Four, four. That's the way I heard it anyway. Let me know what you think. I'm going to play it back for you now with my time signatures displayed while the song's playing. What do you think? Do you agree with me? Let me know in the comments. One thing we often do on this channel, we occasionally listen to cover songs. Now, when I look for a cover song, I don't want a cover song that's just trying to imitate Led Zeppelin. I don't usually have those kind. No. Not always. But yeah. I try to find ones where people take a different take and it sounds different at least. It may not be pleasant. It may be good in its own right or it may totally suck, but it's different. And that's mainly what we're curious about. Yeah. All right, so this one is from 2005. It's by Hacy Dixie. It's from their album Hot Piece of Grass. <laughs> That's a great title. You say Hacy Dixie? Hacy Dixie. Okay. I think this album, I think they had a couple of albums where they just did covers. So this is from 2005. But they did it in there. Hey, album. mama, said the way you okay. move, gonna make you sweat, gonna make you groove. He's honky tonk. That's pretty. It's fast. Ah, uh, child, the way yeah. you shake that thing, gonna make you burn, gonna make you sting. Was that the fiddle? Hey, baby, when you walk that way, watch honey drip, can't keep away. And like one of those no. big basses, like the... Yeah, um, I don't hear the, a fiddle. I don't know what I hear, but it's... it's very I hear guitar, rest. banjo, upright oh, bass. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Ha, ha, ha. Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> so this is ha ha. That was interesting. That was cute. It was cute. It was cute. I want some peanuts now. I don't know if anybody else, show. if you're familiar with Bare Naked Ladies, for some reason, the singing there sounded just like Bare Naked Ladies. So that was weird. That's what I, that's just I the first thing that popped so. in my head when they started singing. There's different guys, first of all, that sing on Bare Naked Ladies. It's not the same guy. It's not the, the main guy, though. No, not that guy. There's oh. another guy that sings some of their other songs. If you told me that was so Bare Naked Ladies, right I would have believed you. Because that's the kind of song that they would put on their album. Not the guy that sings One Week, for instance. Not that guy. The guy that's okay. the other singer. I'm curious in the comments. See if you agree with Mighty me. Mighty Thire Can. Now, this other one, I had to pick two because there were two interesting ones that I couldn't decide between. I don't usually play two, but this has a lot of, enough covers that you could find two interesting ones. So this is also from 2005, coincidentally. That was a year for Black Dogs. I guess. But this one is like a jazz fusion-y type song. I'm dying to hear how they chose to treat it. So this song is by Coriel, Bailey, and White, which I think are just three jazz musicians that decided to get together and make an album. I don't think that's, it's that's why. Jamming. It's jamming. So this is from 2005. Let's hear how they did it. Jazz? What is that? Oh, this that's is jazz. jazz. <laughs> Excuse me while I You'd never know sneak that around turn into black dog. in a back alley. Oh, wait, wait, smoke there a it is. It's like the mellowest way to do black dog. Okay, so they made it a swing tempo. That's different. Need a boa. It's a boa, not a tassel. That is pretty interesting. I could possibly do those drums. Good for them. Yeah, they're having fun. Yeah, okay. Very interesting. Fun. Was not expecting that at all. The most dynamic part, like the singing, screaming part, was the mellowest version of that you could ever do with like mm. a very quiet little guitar. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. You can barely hear it, man. That's cool. It's like a lady taking over a split. I like when people take it and make it their own. One last surprise. I happened to see this guy on TikTok. It's either from TikTok or YouTube. Aaron Paulson, that's the guy's channel. He does a lot of shorts. Okay, let's check that out. Why is every Led Zeppelin song just like, Hey mama, why you're 15? Well, that's okay, cause I'm a creep. That's not the... This is the guy. <laughs> hey, right on, man. Alright, the... The symbols. Uh... <laughs> yeah. That was his response. If everything could come with a musical response like that. I think he does. Funny. I think there's a lot of videos where he does like the one man band thing. Does like rock songs. That was pretty good. For and he was playing the drum thing, but playing the different time signature thing at the same time. Like that was good. That took talent. Even yeah. though it's funny and goofy, it's hard to do. I got a kick out of that. So I just thought I'd throw it in there. That concludes. <laughs> the video <laughs> don't ask me what accent i'm doing for black dog into, like, it was great seeing you guys again i'm sorry we were gone for so long so that's it we're into led zeppelin 4 and next is going to be rock and roll which is another classic led zeppelin song no idea well that's Completely. why we like you on this channel because you are <laughs> you got the, vir what I hear it. the virgin ears we love it thank you all for joining us we'll see you next time so long